Hello, this is a small short video on how to install Filter Forge free packs. And to do that, we need to get to find where I've stored them. And I've I always store them under my downloads here. And under downloads, I have one called Filters here. And here we see uh, five of the six that are currently available. And uh, so all we need to do is click on one of these, like this. As you see, they're uh, executable files, so they will run directly from here. So we run that, and we have to be patient because it has to go through this security warning, like that. And then we have to say yes, and now it'll start. Here we go, click next, accept the agreement, and notice that it's going to install it under program files and then filter forge free pack number one metals you can do that directly so in theory one could run it as it says here a standalone version and what it's also doing is installing a little bit as you can see a small amount into each of these different photoshops so it's installing all of these simultaneously into different photoshops so we click that and that and it will start installing it again we have to be a little bit patient And suddenly it will go. When we've done this, we'll open a Photoshop to see what it's like. Okay, minimize that. Open, uh, say, Photoshop two. Hopefully, it's quick. Yes, not too bad. I'll find one that I've already opened before, so to make it quicker. Um, try one of Norwich Cathedral. Nice and quick. So, it will fit on screen. And now, let's go to the filters. Here we are, and at the bottom we see Filter Forge. And there is free pack metals, and all the others have already pre-installed. If we take photo effects for instance we can see how this works and that's the first thing you should get if your image is more than 3000 pixels in either direction you will not be able to open it at all so that's the first thing you have to do is reduce your files to less than or equal to 3000 pixels and you can see this has immediately come up with an image and this is one of the grunge ones the first default grunge filter so you've instantly got a result, if you like, and you might even be happy with that. But there are lots of more different versions of grunge that, as you can see, some are worse or better, depending on your viewpoint, uh, than others. Uh, Dreamy is another one that's a possibility. Uh, it tends to burn out these sort of areas which were not burnt out in the original. That one's slightly better, but now you see, now is that better or different from the original? There's a little box up here to show you that. If you click on this, it will show the original. So there isn't a great deal of difference in that particular filter. If we try that one, similarly, not a lot of difference. And some of them are really quite extreme, and I uh, probably wouldn't want that, for instance. However, let's move on to Loma. That's uh, an interesting set of uh, structures. This is based on Let's have a look on about. This filter gives you your images an old school analogue look, similar to that of photographs produced by the Lomo Compact Automatic Automat Occult Russian camera manufactured during the Soviet period. So it's all good stuff. Now, there are nine possible variations here. Uh, for instance, that one there is a different one from there, and so forth. This one has a lot of red in it and you just click on and take your pick. Now, uh, you may notice there's a settings tab here. Now, if you click on that, you've then got control over the rest of that, over some of the picture. For instance, you might want to add more red and less green. It's actually more green, isn't it? Well, not, if, if you go that way, it goes bluer, so that's presumably... So you can get it more extreme. There's the frame and vignetting. Now, if I reduce vignetting to zero for a moment, 
you can now see the frame um, and you can alter the width of that frame so that's the difference between frame and vignette the vignette if you like I've moved frame down to zero you can see that vignette just brings a much softer darkening around the edges so you can add frame on the top of it you see like that one other thing you can see is uh, the next variant button down here and you can click on that and you can see it's just selected a different what it's doing is altering these sliders here each time I do that and there are clearly more than 10,000 of these variations about 30,000 different variations so that's plenty of choice <coughs> CPU I think it works quite well if you look at the presets on that that's the basic default <coughs> that's a greenish coloured one that's a more proper sepia um, that I prefer personally being darker than, than any of the others so that's that one old photograph is another one where it adds, adds actually scratches and, and, and more borders and things and again, you can different different colours basically, and some more contrasty than others, with very low contrast. And on, on each of these, you've got more controls on the settings. As you can see here, you can increase the contrast or increase the vignetting, uh, increase the grain even, uh, photo damage. <laughs> reduce it, wipe it out or put it in depends on what you want <laughs> the border damage, yes well that's vitally important on an old photograph of course and the border width and I think we'd rather have that less than more uh, margin width oh, yes that's just some scratch length a bit shorter a longer we have a transparent background, no that doesn't make much difference does it? and so forth. So there you are, that's how to install and operate one of uh, Filter Forge's filters.